Sabrina Miller, or Sabrina Miller 230, is the name of an Instagram account belonging to, well, none other than Sabrina herself. You'll notice at first that Sabrina isn't like most other people on Instagram. In fact, it's hard to really identify her even as a human at all, as she's very clearly a mannequin right? Well, scrolling down, you'll realize that there's something a bit more sinister with her and her um, looks. Even more than that, however, is Sabrina as a person, as she doesn't seem to be all connected with people that well, and for good reason. It's because she's an alien. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of touch. I haven't done this in a long time. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. To be honest, while most of this story is told entirely on Instagram, much of Sabrina Miller has written and shared with us mere human mortals is but a surface level glimpse into her life and her existence as a whole. So we're tackling this in the most organized way possible, going chronologically from her very first post on Instagram to the very latest as of this recording. Keep in mind that every so often we'll encounter characters, names, and such that are integral to Sabrina's story, and though we won't give them too much attention at first, we will dive deeper on them later on whenever they're brought up. However, there are some characters that are probably going to be left for another video, because there's one particular guy named Richard who has so much info on him that he literally has to be done separately than Sabrina. And of course, because most of this story is being told through photos, I won't actually be able to talk about all of them, and I'll just straight up ignore some or briefly mention others, mainly because they're not too important to the story as a whole. Side note, if you are interested in this story, please be respectful. I understand that this will get many enthusiastic people heading towards Sabrina Miller's way and possibly showing support, and that's totally fine, but I'd rather her profile and DMs not be filled with shitty people being shitty. And also, as per any ARG, I'd prefer if most of you don't bring up my name. I always like being on the ground floor with all of you trying to solve mysteries rather than being part of the story. It's just how I've always preferred to work. So, with that on... I haven't done this in so long. So, with that out of the way, let's begin. Whether done by accident or not, Sabrina ended up posting the same photo twice on the same day, and that is our very first introduction to her, which immediately shows that she's not really normal, or at least not really familiar with us. Right off the bat, she has this eerie, forced smile and this horrifying plastic mannequin face. It's unnerving, especially since the photo is so very grainy and somewhat blurry. It's a great introduction to everything, however. A being who is unaware of their own visage, unaware of how to properly use technology given to her, and just learning to blend in with humans. Then comes the next photo, which is an up-close photo of Sabrina, and a paragraph that shares her story with us. Our first real introduction into her and her life. Great day. I helped my friend Barry a bit with his depression. He sent me some photos of him when he was younger in his living room with his mom, cleaning. Some photos of him celebrating his birthday. I reminded him of the nostalgia and to remember good times await in the future. I've always been so scared to interact with people. Ever since Richard, I have felt so used by your kind. But I'm trying to adapt. The closest friend I had was John, but I can't find him after he moved away. Again, we'll be exploring these named people a bit later, but for now, what we can take away from this is really that Sabrina isn't that much different from you or I. She has friends, well, I guess that does make her a bit different from- She has her own fears and securities, and she feels sort of sad that she's lost some of those friends. This is pretty much the first sign that she's not human as she refers to people as your kind, as in humans. The next photo is a simple one. Hello all. Though it doesn't say or show much, it does at least show the kind of personality Sabrina has. She's a very loving and optimistic sort of person. Friendly, even. After this is a photo of Sabrina smiling, hanging out with her best friend Barry, apparently, showing her optimism and overall good vibes, but, but then things take a turn when the next photo is a complete juxtaposition to her cheery, happy-go-lucky smile. Sometimes I have to remember to cry tears, not blood. For some reason, I always mixed up the two. Sometimes it feels weird to release a liquid from my face. I usually have no emotions, but I have some sadness. 
My friend Barry has been feeling worse. I wish I could take his pain away. At this point, this is definitely the weirdest and creepiest post Sabrina has ever shown. It's a clear and stark reminder that Sabrina is not one of us, and she even struggles to replicate some of our feelings. Simple emotions are so strange to her that she can't even process them properly, but sadness and happiness seems to be the ones that she feels the most, as we've seen thus far and will see later on. It's also worth noting that her tags can sometimes be pretty strange. I mean, happy and love, messy even isn't really so out of place, but hungry, thirsty, and yummy? We'll keep that in mind. Getting to learn more about Sabrina with the next photo and description, we see that Sabrina can apparently grow her hair to any length and shade she wants. And she confirms that she's not of this world by casually stating that when she first arrived on this planet, she chose shoulder length hair and then long. We already knew she wasn't human, sure. This is the first time she ever confirmed that she wasn't even of this earth. So, where is she from? Hi. Sometimes I like to sit in the dark. I think about Richard a lot. I used to be so afraid of the dark. If it was not for him, I wouldn't have found this wonderful place. But there was a price. Silver lining, I guess. Plus, I learned how to use light in my eyes to see, and I guess you could call that dope. What an odd world. It's here we learn that Sabrina is not only a being from another world, but it turns out she's possibly not even of this time, with her mentioning that she's seen into the past and into the future, despite not having control of that power yet. Yet what's really interesting is the explanation behind her appearance. This is the form that Sabrina has taken because it brings her comfort, but her real form is something incomprehensible, too frightening for human eyes. Let me just pause this story real quick and just fangirl for a little bit, if that's okay. I always love stories where there are aliens that harbor visages of themselves that are beyond human comprehension. Sort of like Lovecraftian horrors, only, you know, better written. But what I truly love more than that are aliens from different media that cannot understand human emotion. Think about it for a second. If there are beings with forms that are beyond our comprehension, then wouldn't it make sense that we as humans harbor thoughts beyond alien comprehension? So in other words, the human mind is like the equivalent to a Lovecraftian horror to anyone that isn't human. And that's exactly what Sabrina is dealing with. She suffers through human thought and human emotion to the point where it brings her pain and confusion. I think that says a lot about us humans that I think many of us take for granted. I think that's rad as fuck, personally, but let's continue. Sad. I wanted to live on this planet, as a friend, but your kind became too interested in the things I could do, and the magic I performed. It makes me sad, because I originally was invited here for the purpose of friendship, and in hopes to learn from each other, but I was the only one giving, never receiving. I'll be okay. Sometimes depression hits me for a little bit. In the past, Sabrina has been hurt, but more than just hurt, she's been lied to and manipulated, and someone from her past had harmed her to a point where it scarred her mentally, and she could no longer fully trust humans as much as she initially wanted to. Thankfully, her depression doesn't last very long, as the next photo has her smiling, reflecting how her emotions are very unstable, and that she's not quite used to those emotions despite only being here for 70 years, which might be longer than most of you might have realized. This means she's been observing our kind for a while, but she still hasn't really grasped emotions or even really learned how to make connections with humans. It might be that Instagram and other social medias like this can help her really reach out and make new friends. That's most likely the reason why she made an Instagram in the first place. I mean, that's probably the reason why most of us make any sort of social media platform account. In some weird way, Sabrina's story is a story that a lot of humans are going through right now. I think a lot of us want to make connections, and I think a lot of us want to understand our emotions, because even humans don't fully grasp what we feel sometimes. And especially when you're an adult, you don't really make that many friends. And social media is probably the only way that most of us can make friends and new connections. 
But for her to go on for 70 years and not be able to make a single friend other than the names that she's mentioned, it's a sad thing. Because there are clear people in her past that have really, really caused her to shelter herself. But we'll soon see that there are other people in her life that can possibly get her out of this little rut of hers. Or make her fall deeper into that depressive hole that she's always been in. Red is a wonderful color. When I get angry, I feel this color for some reason. Interestingly, these next set of photos were actually a sort of mini story arc involving Sabrina and her friend Barry, compiled in seven posts, all of which talk about her relationship with Barry even further, and her experiences with romantic feelings for others while on Earth. And so let's talk about these posts real quick. The first post has Sabrina feeling excited for the future, as Barry admitted he had feelings for her. We got the name John again, a man who was once her close friend. She tells us that she loved him, but the two were never in a relationship. They meant a lot to each other. But going back to one of the earlier posts, one of the first posts ever made, she mentions that she could no longer find him after he moved away. And it's about here where John's story kind of ends. Out of the, I don't know, 80 or so posts that she's made, this is probably the last time John has ever been mentioned. Except for one more place, but we'll get to that way later in the video. The next post, however, talks about how Barry and Sabrina have now arranged a date, and how she needs to prepare, showing confusion that she even needs to look pretty, quote unquote, and giving us a clue on how her species back home work, hinting they're a sort of hive mind race, maybe, or perhaps a race of humanoid things or something else that are part of a larger being it's kind of really hard to say the next is a massive lore dump on a man named richard who's been mentioned a few times before i'm going to save this for another time as i've mentioned richard before and dude there's just so much i mean richard is unlike any other character mentioned before or even after this post he is a human who has greatly affected sabrina mostly negatively and perhaps knows more about sabrina and her anatomy than even sabrina knows about herself due to how significant of an impact he has on the story we'll have to leave him alone for now and revisit him later on in the future but all you need to know now is that sabrina when first arriving on this planet was miserable and though she felt disconnected with humans, she had a fondness for nature. Eventually, she opened up to just one man, and that man being Richard. But that ultimately did not end well with her, nor did her interactions with her current friend Barry, as we'll see now. When he saw me, he said he was scared of me. He said I looked artificial. I did my best to look pretty, but I guess it wasn't good enough. I hoped he would have let me in, but the door remained locked. I stood there for one hour, 34 minutes, and 17 seconds before leaving. He loved when I helped him through his problems, when I listened to him when nobody else would or could. I even tried to form a calming figure to help him through his nightmares. He ran away from me then, and he ran away from me now. I was being used by him. Just like I was, Richard. Your kind are so cruel. I never really interacted with humans besides Richard. I would live amongst everyone, keeping to myself. Now, I wish I would have stayed in the woods, where the animals and plants never judged. I miss John. Tragically, after meeting with her friend Barry, Barry was horrified to see Sabrina which is strange because I had thought that they'd already have known each other and known how the others looked, especially when previously Sabrina had stated she was hanging out with Barry before, but reading this carefully, you'll see that she mentioned helping Barry through his nightmares by taking on a calming figure. The wording is interesting because this could imply that she was literally visiting him when he was having nightmares, or she could have meant figuratively, as in my life is a nightmare. Either way, this would at least suggest they've hung out before and actually talked face to face, but if she's changed her form before just to talk to him, who's to say that she hasn't done so the entire time they've known each other? I think it's clear that Sabrina isn't being truthful. Or perhaps she just doesn't know any better. After all, this form she's taken is her more comfortable one. 
despite it being incredibly uncanny and extremely fucking terrifying for most. Maybe she has a form where she actually talks to humans because she realizes that her actual casual, comfortable form is not one that most people are comfortable talking to. In the next post, she laments how close she's gotten to him, but mentions that she had given Barry a protector. I have no idea what that means, to be frank, and even later on, it's never really explained what she could have meant, but that doesn't seem to be the most important part of this whole story. One last thing to note about this post, though, is her mentioning that she is hungry in the tags. You're going to have to keep that in mind for now. After this, she talks more about her home world, stating that there's no real concept of individuality back home, and again, in the tags, she mentions she's hungry and angry, meaning she's just one step away from calling the manager. The next post, she talks about the berry, one, the berry, yeah, the berry, the one singular fucking berry, I suck dick at recording my own shit. The next post, she talks about berry one last time, stating that berry asked her to forgive her, but she said she didn't saying forgiveness is not of her nature. At first glance, it might seem that they talked it out, maybe, but if you have the reading comprehension of an eight-year-old, you'll figure out that she actually ate him, as the photo shows her smiling with dry blood on her face. You have to remember that up until this post, she's been mentioning how she's been hungry and angry this whole time. Even in the post itself, she mentions how she only knows hunger and anger right now because that's all she can feel and forgiveness is the last thing on her mind. And if you read the tags down below this very post, she states how he tasted good using the hashtag sweet flesh. And this is the part that was seldom shown with Sabrina's previous posts her diet. Being a creature from a different planet, it's assumed she wouldn't eat like us humans, but she does eat creatures like us humans, or just straight up humans themselves, like Barry. Which is interesting, because if she's trying to integrate herself into human life and trying to be like one of us, then would this be considered an act of cannibalism? Either way, it seems that she didn't feel bad eating him. Sure, she was controlled by anger, but it seems that Sabrina thinks this was perfectly okay, showing once again how little she cares about human life. She may like us, but she doesn't necessarily view us as an equal to herself, and so ends the tale of Barry and her relationship with him. The next three posts are pretty mundane. Sabrina receives mail, she has a call, video call with one of her friends, and she gets her nails done. We wouldn't hear about Sabrina for a while after this post because apparently she had been gone away for a little vacation. She informs us that she came back with this post. Back from where? Back from her home planet. Apparently during her little vacay, she was informed by her people that she should try learning more about us by studying us, which we'll bring up later. For now, things become more mundane here onwards. Well. I mean, she, she does shed her skin, that's like, you know, I guess that's part of a woman's anatomy, I'm not really sure, and I'm not gonna judge. Why would I? I don't know shit about women. I'm stupid and gay. Then she made a mask out of the molted skin, and it's like, uh, you know, wow. Sabrina then talks about a new friend she made while tagging love and hunger over and over again. Another post that mentions a new friend has the curious, he doesn't believe me tags, which is strange. Things get truly strange, I can't, why am I using that word over and over, I gotta find a synonym. Things get really bizarre when she makes this post. Sadly, one of my friends wasn't helping. So my two friends who are left over will be coming home with me to be studied. They were so excited, maybe in a bad way. But I tried to reassure them that they will be taken good care of. Ever since some parts of my family wanted to be independent like me, they want to learn how to blend in with all of you and that will take studying. It's been hinted at before, but Sabrina isn't very empathetic of humans. She may love them, but love to her has always been confusing, especially after the abuse she faced when she used to be with Richard. However, now it seems that she's more forthcoming with humans, and instead of getting to learn about them and feel anything for them, she snatches them away and takes them to her people, whether they want to or not. As for those who don't comply, I can only assume she eats them. Sabrina is now changing from someone who was on the fence about humans to straight up not giving them a chance and doing what she wants to them. After all, why show love and empathy to creatures she finds cruel? Cheesecake guy. 
Hmm. Things get dire as her perception of humans start to deteriorate, lamenting how nature is a beautiful thing, but humans have destroyed so much of it, going out to find food, but finding no one outside, meaning she's seeing humans as just that, something to eat, saying how her two friends that she abducted are doing well in their new home, meaning they'll probably never return, leaving ominous posts such as a storm is brewing. All the while, people aren't making her feel better about humanity as she receives messages like this, and this, and this, only solidifying how she views humans now. And that's an interesting part of this whole Sabrina Miller thing, because of the interactions that she has like these. It's because of interactions like these that this can be considered an ARG, but a good one. See, there's interaction with the, the audience, both in the comments and the DMs, and I think that's such an integral part of what makes an ARG so good. It's that touch of humanity, ironically enough, that helps us connect with this story. So far, there haven't been too many interactions that are too noteworthy, but the lore that Sabrina, or rather whoever created Sabrina's story, is very well crafted. It's not super deep, but ask the right questions and Sabrina will open up more about who she is, where she's from, and how she feels. For example, someone asked what her species is and she replied to them by saying that the human alphabet can't convey what she's called, but she's from a distant universe nonetheless. She also revealed that the reason she's here is because someone on Earth, through deep meditation, was able to contact her, once again, being Richard. See, people don't really do this sort of interaction with modern ARGs, I feel. Too many people stick with puzzles and cryptic messages and stupid YouTube videos, but actually touching base with your audience and having a one-on-one -on -one with them can feel rewarding and can make your audience feel like they do have an impact on the story itself. After all, not all of us know what Base 64 is or how to find a rock key, so you can find someone sometimes feeling lost about how to go about with the ARG. However, if you're someone who can ask the right questions, you might be just as helpful as the guy who can decrypt stuff. Anyways, sorry, I kind of ranted off topic there. The point is, I'm really loving this story a ton, and I think if you're really into it, you should probably check it out yourself and see what you can find or ask Sabrina. For now, let's just continue with the surface level stuff. The more Sabrina posts, the more we see her hunger grow, as with the next two posts we see her mouth and hands covered in blood. While it's not made clear what she ate, she states that there are many organic forms she can choose to eat. With the way she's been thinking about humans, we can only assume that she's been eating many more humans. It began with Barry, and now who knows how many lives she's gorged on, which is the wording she used on this post. The next two posts reveal her origins, where she came from, and the different beings she had met on her journey here. But because so many of these details relate to Richard, as well as much of her origins being scattered everywhere, we're going to leave these posts for another time. The next post we see is of Sabrina admitting that she's often watching humans at shopping malls, observing how daily life is like for us, confused by what we do. It seems that at this point she's pretty much stopped caring about what we do and every possible thing that confuses her about us is just another reason for her to do what she does. And the next time we see her, she has bloodied fingers, showing that she has most likely kidnapped more humans as she needs more to quote unquote study. And it seems like she's really taking people by force. Those friends she made, well, it seems like they're already heading off to her home planet to be studied. Before this, however, we get an interesting revelation about Sabrina's species and the sort of powers they wield. Almost there. Did you know that my species can enter your dreams? Sometimes they'll be nice to you, and other times they will not. Don't be scared though, they can't actually hurt you in the dreams, but they sure do make them feel real. Going back to when Sabrina talked about Barry, we can now confirm that Sabrina really was entering Barry's dreams, which can now give us a clearer light on why it is Barry was so frightened of Sabrina when they'd allegedly been talking for so long as best friends. It's kind of likely that Sabrina never actually met Barry at all in person or even on a phone, but rather in a dream. This made Barry feel comfortable as Sabrina could have just been yet another part of Barry's dreams, and in dreams, even the most distorted and strangest creatures could seem normal to us, whether we're aware of their existence or not. 
Sabrina also shows her lack of understanding when saying that while her people can't harm humans in their dreams, they can certainly make it feel real. Saying this in such a candid tone makes it seem like she doesn't even really understand what pain is, so long as it doesn't do any bodily harm, it's really not that big of a deal. With this sort of understanding of humans, it's frightening to think just what would happen if she gave her people the wrong message about us. Up until now, Sabrina has shown a great misunderstanding of human emotions, feelings, activities, friendships, and many other things, but the most prevalent of these emotions that she understands and is attached to is love, sadness, and anger. And because of her broken bond with Barry, anger is now currently the most prevalent emotion, mixing up her happiness with selfishness as she devours humans and abducts them to be studied on her home planet. It seems she's still enthusiastic about human life on Earth and still wants to be human, but finds us to be cruel, confusing, leaving her apathetic of our way of life. And with their family now interested in us humans and coming here to quote-unquote visit, we will soon see Sabrina's true colors, and perhaps even a change of heart right after this. Hey, so I got a Patreon. I really hope that if you enjoy my content, you become a patron. Okay, that's it. Patreon.com forward slash gooseboos. Still here? Okay, I don't want to waste your time, so skip to this number if you want to continue the video. Otherwise, let me elaborate on the fact that I did in fact make a Patreon. So I get most funding for not only just my life, but my channel, mostly from YouTube. And honestly, I think most of you know, YouTube isn't really always stable. There's a lot of work that you need to put into your channel that sometimes doesn't always work out. And I really do want to experiment with this channel more and do new things. All of it, of course, being horror related, so don't worry too much about that. But I just want to do more and talk more about other stuff like horror games, obscure horror films, the behind the scenes stuff that you don't see, and just more paranormal stuff as well, alongside potentially real life content. Of course, mini mysteries and videos like this focusing on weird online stuff will still continue, but I want to broaden my horizons on the topics I focus on. I also want to get better at editing and implementing Blender into my videos, and getting an actual stable amount of funds going my way will ensure that I can take my time and actually learn how to edit better and make better content in the future. So I hope that if you truly enjoy my content and have faith in my content moving forward, you'd become a patron. If not, just watching my vids are enough, honestly. And I thank you so much for your viewership. Seriously, every view counts, every like helps, but not necessary. And subbing to my content is super appreciated, and it's all free. So thank you again for watching my stuff and for supporting me for as long as y'all have. I hope this year will be a fruitful one, and I hope to see all of you later on with more content that I produce and more stuff that hopefully you'll like. I hope you enjoy the rest of my content this year. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Love y'all. Let's continue. I tried to have one of my family members take a photo of me, turning into my true form, but sadly, this was the only thing it captured. Polaroids captured it better. Digital cameras get all messed up. My face sort of changed, but not enough. This is the first glance of what Sabrina looks like in her true form, and it won't be the last time we see her try to capture it. With mention of family members, we can now assume her family, who were interested in Earth, are now currently walking among us. Though this seems to be only a visit for them, as the next post wouldn't happen until 8 months later, where Sabrina gives us an ominous photo, stating that she had to take care of something really important. But she never really clears up what that something is, but we'll see in a bit what that might be. Nonetheless, our next post is much, much wordier. The feeling of being back on this planet is one I have truly missed. A sense of euphoria. I went home with two new friends from here. They were nervous at first, like all the rest. But once they arrived, they entered a sort of state that made them speechless. My people learned so much about the human emotion response. It gives us an opportunity to visit you more and not feel out of place. I was going to stay home. My family wanted it. But truth be told, I feel like this place is my second home. And when I came back, the sweet smell of smog was a nostalgia rush that 
one who was addicted to a drug could only describe. My new roommate, he doesn't know I'm living here yet, seems really cool. We'll update you all with info soon. The way she says that her two abductees helped teach her people about human emotional responses sort of gets me unnerved. If Sabrina, an alien living amongst humans, can barely understand human emotions and empathize with pain and other important human feelings, then I wonder what exactly her people are doing to these two humans. They're probably being put to their absolute limits in terms of, you know, emotional responses. It kind of reminds me of that one scene from the Animatrix where the machines are sort of poking at the brains and you can see the faces like smile and cry and they're trying to figure I'm, I'm like imagining that's probably what's happening. Some horrific shit, I'm sure. That being said, Sabrina is now back home and is now living inside someone else's house, possibly within their walls. Rad. More about her hair, that's nice. Then after this, Sabrina again attempts to take a photo of her true form to no avail. After this, she molts again, showing her face without makeup and... You know, what she says in the post, it's super wholesome, actually, so I'm gonna say, hey, you look good, queen. Things do get creepy, though, as Sabrina has robbed her roommate's landlord's doorknob and says that she'll be visiting him soon. Well, that's not ominous at all. Then she gets sexually harassed by someone who DM'd her. Rad. Man, even alien women can't catch a fucking break, huh? But all that sort of lightheartedness aside, except for the sexual harassment stuff, that's really not cool, we get a bit of a disturbing post. Old news clip of me on the television set. Whoever sketched me like this did me dirty. So now things are starting to add up. When you read this old, quote unquote, news clip, you can see that it's a clip from sometime in November, around the time that Sabrina stopped posting just before her eight month long hiatus. Adding two and two together, it would seem that Sabrina has been on the run. I mean, she's been gone eight months, doesn't explain why or for what, and for many posts leading up to her eight months hiatus, we see her having bloodied fingers and sometimes a bloodied face. Adding to the fact that she is now currently living in a new home with people that doesn't even know she lives there with them, we get a clearer picture as to why she had been absent. Oh wait, it says, it just says why right here. Sabrina is now wanted for multiple homicides and acts of aggravated assault. She's also apparently six feet tall, which is funny because most mannequins are around that height. But not coincidental at all, considering she well modeled herself after a mannequin. So we've pretty much known that Sabrina has been devouring humans, but interestingly, if there is an APB for Sabrina, then that means she was caught once. I mean, not caught as in, you know, jailed, but caught as in someone actually saw her, or maybe some sort of camera recorded her doing this. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say. Huh. Maybe we'll find out in the next post. They aren't cold. None of them get cold. They inevitably become room temperature, a fact that I was horribly mistaken on. I always thought they became cold. Still so much to learn. I couldn't control my hunger last night. They didn't deserve what happened to them. Why do you have to taste so good? My species eats organic matter, and that typically was organisms that had no physical form, but this just tastes so much better. Being at home for the length of time that I was, I forgot how to control my emotions again, but I'm trying. Fun fact, I have night vision sight. After Richard, I would have sneaked into people's homes at night, so I adapted to the darkness quickly. These three posts are self-explanatory. I have nothing to add. Well, other than the fact that these photos are fucking terrifying to look at. It's becoming clear that Sabrina Miller is becoming more unhinged as time moves on. The next post shows this as she's apparently broken into someone's house and just straight up takes psychedelics, giving us possibly the strangest look Sabrina has ever shown us, or maybe in some ways the most human look. A strange mixture between her mannequin self and something closer to a human face. What this could mean, well, I, I don't know. Maybe she's getting closer to being human. Maybe the psychedelics actually had her take on a form that's not like a mannequin at all. Who's to really say? And what happened to the people that she 
visited that night. Don't know. But the following few posts are far more noteworthy, as Sabrina now gives us an insight into her past and into Richard himself. Again, so much of this is worthy of its own video, but I definitely don't want to leave you hanging, so we'll briefly cover some interesting points. For one thing, we learn that Sabrina used to be in high school. Not just once, but in fact at least five times, as seen with each of her yearbook photos. The last one she's smiling because at this point she was truly happy, and humans were kinder to her. Here we see her with Richard Williams, our first and only look at his face, at least wherever part of his face you can make out. He was a doctor. He was also Sabrina's friend, her first source of happiness. But ironically, he was also Sabrina's greatest source of sorrow and anger. And then there are the Polaroids. The few examples of what Sabrina's true form might look like, as well as the first example of her turning into something other than organic material. She can turn herself into light, apparently. Richard also used her to transform herself into his ex-girlfriend, further showing the manipulation Richard was committing. This is the man that caused Sabrina to distrust humanity, and it made her spiral down a path of anger. This is just a small glimpse into Sabrina's tragic past. Through Richard, she had lost a way to be herself, and had no idea how to interact with humans ever since. And now, she lives alone, feeling unloved, sad, and hungry. But still, she thinks of him nowadays, with photos like this, an old Polaroid of a woman with Morse code written on the Polaroid. He needed to let her go, is what it says. The next photo being of Sabrina with the caption, I don't understand why he wanted me to change. I always felt beautiful the way I was. Whenever Sabrina gets into this more depressive state, it seems she lets more of her true nature come out. And her very image literally gets darker, as does her mind. And with posts like this one, we can see where her mind is at this point. Fall is a bittersweet time for me. It was the beginning of everything for me. Now I will enjoy this wonderful storm and think about everything. Some of my family have arrived here. Couple things to note. If you see an animal, object, or person that looks slightly off, it may be one of them. So be nice and respectful. I know it may seem odd, but they are just here to experience the pleasures of being an independent human like you. There's only one that you have to worry about, and I advise you to not get near him if you see him. His name is Vino Targus. And please, whatever you do, do not say his name many times out loud. And if you feel him in the dream, ignore him. Thank. One thing that was touched on previously is Sabrina's ability to shapeshift into pretty much anything. She's already taken on the forms of a mannequin-human hybrid, and as well as a form of Richard's ex, but this is only just the tip of the iceberg. Since her family is obviously of the same species as Sabrina, it's fair to assume they too can shapeshift. And so they've chosen to shapeshift into not just humans, but objects and animals as well. It's limitless, the possibilities that they could have, as even before Sabrina had attempted to turn herself and succeeded into turning herself into actual light. And then there's Vinyl Targus, or Vinyl Targus? Vinyl Targus? I don't know, I'll say Vinyl Targus from now on. Who that is, is currently unknown, but it's clear that Sabrina dislikes him, and even recognizes he may be a threat to humans, ironically coming from Sabrina herself. There's also the part where you're not supposed to say his name out loud, at least not many times, as stated before, because he could visit you in your dreams. It's here after that Sabrina gets sentimental about Earth and its inhabitants, with a lengthy post about her nostalgia for the world and how it felt entering our world for the very first time. It was like entering through a doorway made of a beautiful, all-knowing light. The contrast was fascinating because there was also a blackness in this light that felt never-ending, almost like a black tunnel that stretched to the ends of the universe. Halfway through the door, its shape went from a rectangle to a circle, with that familiar cold blackness in the middle and with that same familiar light around it. It felt like what your species would describe life and death to be like. And despite it only taking a second for me to step foot from my world to yours, it 
felt as if my body was shot through a cannon moving millions of miles. It felt as though I was traveling around the universe. I felt a cold cosmic wind go through my own being, which caused me a great deal of excitement. The autumn air reminds me of that feeling. This time of year is bittersweet for me. Halloween! Boo! Ah! After these Halloween posts, Sabrina informs us of something unfortunate. Vinyl Targus, Sabrina's brother, has apparently been causing problems for humans. Because he can apparently enter people's dreams, as many of our people can, he apparently has been able to lure people with his own name, and it's assumed that he's been abducting people, and possibly torturing them, eating them afterwards. Because the next post says that he only cares about his own sick pleasures, which could mean that Vinyl Targus takes a lot of pleasure from just torturing humans. This is the only known picture of Vinyl Targus. It was taken from his last victim, his latest victim actually, from someone's brother who had posted that their brother had gone missing and that this was the final photo that they found on their phone. It's here after that Sabrina decides to take action against her brother and says that she will be removing him, likely meaning she's going to kill him with some help. It's unclear what exactly happens here. It almost feels like there's a chapter missing in this story because the next post we see from Sabrina, well, apparently she has new friends. She's eating what I'm assuming and maybe hoping is a turkey and not a human. And oh, Vinyl Targus is dead, I guess. And yeah, uh, she has a sibling that took the form of a cat and he can cook. I know it seems anticlimactic, but this is sort of where we reach the end of this part of the story. At least, the end of this chapter, I should say. Sabrina celebrates Christmas, remembers Richard again, and then some way, somehow, she's currently in hiding again, but this time from higher beings for dealing with a billionaire. And this billionaire story goes way deeper than you might think, but it's actually pretty heavily connected to Richard, or at least it would seem that way. And then there's the mention of John, a character seldom mentioned before, but has been part of the story since the beginning, and it would seem that he has tragically passed away. But who was he? Someone close, apparently, but can we find out more? Not just about John, but about Sabrina as well, her species, her people, the things they can do, their limits, and the parts of the story that seem missing. Well, to answer all of that, we need to talk about Richard Williams and everything he wrote about Sabrina before his untimely passing. But I'm going to stop right here because, holy shit, we've been going 40 minutes. But trust me when I say that there's so much more. So much more left over. I highly recommend checking out Sabrina Miller's Instagram account. I, I, I may have gone through a majority of her posts, but genuinely there are quite a few hidden interactions that reveals so much more about her that it's fascinating. And of course, there are her new posts that have been exploring more of her travels as well as her campaign against the Schmids. Who? Well, you're gonna have to stick around to find out, or again, visit her profile yourself to find out yourself. I, I, I want to remind y'all that I don't want to be part of this whole story. Don't mention my name, please. I mean it. it. When interacting with Sabrina, be respectful and be kind, and act accordingly. This is an interactive story after all, so what we say here can potentially affect the outcome of the story, so choose your words and DMs wisely. I know that when I first streamed this over on my Twitch, she had about 700 to 800 followers, and now that number has nearly tripled with her having 2300 followers now, and I'm sure that's gonna grow way more after this video is published. And that's great, honestly. I'm happy for her, because at the end of the day, it's an interesting story that has so many hidden layers that just needs to be uncovered, and hopefully we can dissect this even more later in the future. But for now, I'm gonna have to leave you with this. Sabrina Miller is an interesting character, who is currently on the verge of either being one of humanity's greatest contact with aliens that we've ever had, or possibly one of humanity's greatest threats. She's teetering on both saving humanity, or possibly destroying it, maybe even enslaving it. She has a lot going on for her, but there's only one person that can really answer all of those questions that we have about her, her life, her past, and everything, and thankfully, we have that man's journal, and we'll be continuing the story later on in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, I'll see y'all next time, love y'all a ton. Goodbye.
brought up into abuse. <gasps> no wonder you are so fucked up. You. Ah, uh, yes, you. Hurt as people. People who didn't deserve it. Devouring them as a way to suppress your own emotions. You did want the human experience. <laughs> Part of that means being mentally unstable, you fucking balloon animal. But I will make this easy for you. Follow these steps, and you will be perfect.